there are so many intricate little nuances that people have spent a really long time working on and thinking about. So I appreciate the time they take and all of it's incorporated into her costume, her hair, her makeup, her props. They're an incredible team. One of the guys that turned out to be a real treasure for me in the journey of putting this movie together is a gentleman by the name of Rob Kautz, who's a Toronto tattoo artist. It was simply going to be, hey, help me come up with some tattoo ideas for these characters. But in working with him and these conversations with him, that the characters sort of grew and evolved. A big part of what I do is listening to people. And I always search for keywords whether it's a specific area or a time period or a color palette, that he's really keen on giving very specific keywords. But if it needs tweaking, he'll tell you specifically. Or he'll just get his hands dirty and he'll just do it. He'll make a little sketch because he knows what he likes and he knows what he doesn't like. Each tattoo on everybody has its own specific story. You know, there's Enchantress who has these very specific tribal tattoos and hex signs and ancient magic runes from grimoires and things like that. Everything with its own specific sort of language and history. I mean, the process was kind of interesting. It started off with a little bit of tattoos and they started growing. It was like everywhere. My entire body was covered with tattoos. And during sort of that like process of trying to find the complete look of the character, I was like, yeah, the more I don't look like me, the better it's gonna be. Wait, what's that crap on your face? Does it wash off? I'm so scared people are gonna go get rotten tattooed on their cheek now. <laughs> yeah, girls, you got the glove. Oh, no. We all ended up like giving each other tattoos. You want it traced or freehand? <laughs> freehand. Freehand. Oh, freehand. Here it goes. Here we go, here we go. You want me to roll up with I'm your nervous. camera It was like Harley's tattoo parlor. <laughs> like that size? <laughs> like that? Sure. <laughs> All right, that's good enough. Yeah? Yeah. That's good. Yeah! Yeah! That's the wife. So, wait, that's wait, right, wait, baby. wait, we gotta clean it. You don't like that angle. The angle sucks, right? <laughs> you wanted to cut a little more shit. No, no, no. Then... It's perfect. <laughs> okay. It's just a, an, odd, an odd angle choice. <laughs> that's terrible. <laughs> Killer Croc, he's more like the original version, which was this guy who had a kind of a skin condition. He wasn't a giant monster like he sometimes is in the books. And Croc, to me, very dangerous and deadly. Waylon Jones, as he was known before he became Croc, has such a rich backstory from being this villain who pits against Batman right back to the beginnings of him as a child and being raised by this abusive aunt who used to ridicule him and beat him and try to scrub the scales off of him because as a teenager, he started to develop this skin affliction and scales started coming out. He was treated like a monster and he became a monster and really isolated himself from the world and isolated himself from society and become a bit of this literal underworld figure. David had a pretty precise idea of what he wanted Killer Croc to look like initially he showed me some photographs and images, but it evolved as we move closer to principal photography. Initially, he was a lot greener, and then David had this great idea. He wanted all the characters very rooted in reality, so that it was more the shades and tones of my own colors, the browns and beiges, and it just made it more organic and more real. You could see the human side, but it turned into this creature. I live on the ground. Y'all are just tools. I think Adewale may have actually eaten a person for real as prep for the character. He really, really became a crocodile for this movie. And there were people in the film who came up missing. <laughs> <laughs> It was a lot of fun. Obviously, Guy, Glenn, and Richard do a tremendous amount of pre-production training and design and maximize what the actors can do to make them look the best when they're doing stunts. It's very important that you are fit. Killer Croc is quite bulky, he was a big guy. So my schedule was pretty rigorous. An hour in the morning was just weightlifting, followed by fight training with the stunt crew. We were really developing techniques for Killer Croc. This is the first time we've seen him 